Hey everyone, welcome back to Fuzzy Logic Lectures. In the previous video, we looked into the different types of graphical techniques for inferences and we learned the first type which is the Mamdani method. In this lecture, we'll be looking into the second type of graphical inference technique and this is called as the Sugino method or the Sugino systems. So let's get started. As we have seen in the previous video, in the case of Mamdani systems, we had two antecedents and one consequent and they were all fuzzy sets or fuzzy numbers. That is, it was in the form of if x1 is a1 and x2 is a2, then y is b. Here x1 and x2 were the inputs and y was the output and a1, a2 and b were all fuzzy sets or fuzzy numbers. However, in the case of the Sugino system, the two antecedents are fuzzy sets or fuzzy numbers but the consequent is given as a function of the two inputs in the antecedents. That is, it will be in the form of if x1 is a1 and x2 is a2, then y is y is equal to f of x1, x2, where y is equal to f of x1, x2 is a crisp function in the consequent. So as you can see here, our two antecedents are both fuzzy sets of fuzzy numbers, but our consequent is given as a function of the two inputs in the antecedent. Now this f of x1, x2 can be any general function as long as it describes the output of the system within the fuzzy region as specified in the antecedent of the rule to which it is applied. Now very important thing to note in the Sugino systems is that each rule will have a crisp output that is given by a function. That is our output y will be a crisp number. Therefore, the overall aggregated output will be obtained through the weighted average defalsification method. Let me represent this graphically so that you can get a better idea. Suppose we have two rules, rule 1 and rule 2. Rule 1 is given as if x1 is a11 and x2 is a21, then y1 is equal to p1x1 plus q1x2 plus r1. And rule 2 is given as if x1 is a12 and x2 is a22, then y2 is equal to p2x1 plus q2x2 plus r2. Where you can see that in rule 1 and rule 2, both the antecedents, they both are fuzzy sets of fuzzy numbers and the consequent is given as a function of the inputs as specified in the antecedent. We have also been given the graphs of the fuzzy sets a11, a21, a12 and a22. And here again x1 and x2, they are the inputs in the case of rule 1 and x1 and x2 are the inputs in case of rule 2 and y1 is the output for rule 1 and y2 is the output for rule 2 and mu in all these graphs it represents the membership values. Now as we have done for the Mamdani systems what we need to do is we need to find out the corresponding membership values for the inputs x1 and x2 in the case of rule 1 first. So first we found out the corresponding membership value for x1 which is wx1 where wx1 is a corresponding membership value for x1 and similarly wx2 is a corresponding membership value for x2. And after that, like in the case of Mamdani systems, we have to take the minimum of wx1 and wx2 because in the case of rule 1, our both antecedents are connected by the AND operator. And as we have studied earlier in the previous lecture, wherever the AND operator comes, we have to take the minimum of the membership values of x1 and x2. For those of you who have a confusion in this topic, please refer lecture 17 of a fuzzy logic playlist. I have provided the link in the description below. So since we are using the AND operator, we take the minimum of wx1 and wx2 which is of course wx2 and then this becomes our corresponding membership value for our output y1. Therefore, our output y1 will have a corresponding membership value equal to wy1 where y1 is equal to p1x1 plus q1x2 plus r1. Similarly, we have to do for rule 2, where we find out the corresponding membership values of x1 and x2, which is wx1 and wx2 respectively. Then once again, we take the minimum of wx1 and wx2, because over here, again, rule 2 is connected by the AND operator. And that's why we take the minimum of both. And we know that the minimum here will yield wx1, and therefore this becomes our corresponding membership value for y2. That is y2's corresponding membership value is given by wy2 where y2 is equal to p2x1 plus q2x2 plus r2. 
Now that we've obtained the membership values for Y1 and Y2, we can directly apply the weighted average method to get the defalsified value Y star. That is, we'll be getting the overall aggregated output with the help of weighted average defalsification method as given by Y star is equal to WY1 into Y1 plus WY2 into Y2 divided by WY1 plus WY2. Where WY1 and WY2 are the corresponding membership values of Y1 and Y2 respectively. And Y1 is given as P1X1 plus Q1X2 plus R1. And Y2 is given as P2X1 plus Q2X2 plus R2. So this is how you solve with the help of Sugino systems. Let me take a solved example so you can understand this better. The question given to us here is, consider a two input single output Sugino model with four rules as, rule one is, if x1 is small and x2 is small, then y1 is equal to minus x1 plus x2 plus one. And rule two is, if x1 is small and x2 is large, then y2 is equal to minus x2 plus three. And rule 3 is given as, if x1 is large and x2 is small, then y3 is equal to minus x1 plus 3. And rule 4 is, if x1 is large and x2 is large, then y4 is equal to minus x1 plus x2 plus 2. So we need to find the output when x1 is equal to 1.5 and x2 is equal to 2.5. We have also been provided the graphs for the small and large fuzzy sets for x1 and x2. As you can see here, the small fuzzy set is depicted by the orange color line or the orange graph and the large fuzzy set is depicted by the purple or the lavender color line and that is there for the case of x1 and x2. So our first step is to find out the corresponding membership values for x1 and x2 in the case of rule 1. So rule 1 is given as if x1 is small and x2 is small that is we have to consider the small graph for both x1 and x2. So first, we take x1 is equal to 1.5 in the case of rule 1. So 1.5 will come somewhere over here. We'll put this point as 1.5. And then we have to extend 1.5 to get the corresponding membership value. So when we extend 1.5, we'll get it as 0.3. Therefore, the corresponding membership value for 1.5 will be 0.3. Similarly, we need to find out the corresponding membership value for x2 which is 2.5 in the case of rule 1. As you can see here, x2 is small. Therefore, again we should consider the x2 line or the x2 graph. So here x2 is 2.5 and 2.5 will come somewhere over here. Therefore, I'll mark this region as 2.5. Then I'm going to extend 2.5 so that I get the corresponding membership value. So when I extend 2.5, I will get it as 0.4. Therefore, the corresponding membership value for 2.5 will be 0.4. Next, we have to find out for rule 2. Rule 2 is given as if x1 is small and x2 is large. Now, since I've already found out the corresponding membership value for 1.5 when x1 is small, which is equal to 0.3. Therefore, over here also the membership value will be 0.3. And when x2 is large, we have to consider the large graph or the large line and find out the corresponding membership value for 2.5. So I'll extend this line and when I extend it, I will get it as 0.7. Therefore, the corresponding membership value for 2.5 will be 0.7 in the case when x2 is large. Then we have rule 3. Rule 3 is given as if x1 is large and x2 is small. So here we have to consider when x1 is large. That is you should be considering this graph or this line and we have to extend 1.5 till we get the corresponding membership value. So when we extend this, we will get it as 0.8. Therefore the corresponding membership value for 1.5 will be 0.8 in the case when x1 is large. And here it is given that x2 is small in the case of rule 3. Now since I have already found out when x2 is small, the value is 0.4. Therefore, over here the value that we take in the case of rule 3 will also be 0.4. And lastly, we have for rule 4. Rule 4 is given that x1 is large and x2 is large. So here we have to take the condition when x1 is large. 
and we have already found out the corresponding membership value for 1.5 when x1 is large and that is 0.8 and similarly when x2 is large the corresponding membership value for 2.5 in the case of large is 0.7 and hence 0.7 is a corresponding membership value for 2.5 in the case of rule 4 now the next step is to find out the corresponding membership values for y1 y2 y3 and y4 now to find out the corresponding membership value for y1 which is wy1 we have to take the minimum of wx1 and wx2 that is we have to take the minimum of 0.3 and 0.4 in the case of rule 1 as we have found earlier and this will be equal to 0.3 therefore wy1 that is a corresponding membership value for y1 will be 0.3 and the reason why we have taken the minimum is because we are using the and operator over here so this will be the case for all the four rules because all the four rules are connected by the and operator Similarly we find out for the corresponding membership value for y2. So here we have to take the minimum of 0.3 and 0.7. So we take the minimum of 0.3 and 0.7 in the case of rule 2 and we'll get it as 0.3. Therefore the corresponding membership value for y2 will be 0.3. Similarly when we find for y3 we have to take the minimum of 0.8 and 0.4. So we take the minimum of 0.8 and 0.4, we shall get it as 0.4. And lastly, we'll take it for y4. That is, we find out the corresponding membership value for y4. So we get it as minimum of 0.8 and 0.7. So here we take the minimum of 0.8 and 0.7, and we get it as 0.7. Therefore, the corresponding membership value for y4 will be 0.7. Now that we have found out all the membership values of the corresponding outputs, we need to find out what are the crisp outputs y1, y2, y3, and y4. And for that, we have to solve these equations. As in, we substitute the values of x1 and x2 onto all these equations. So first, let's do for y1. So we have y1, which is equal to minus x1 plus x2 plus one, and this is equal to. Minus one point five because x one is equal to one point five plus two point five plus one, and when we solve this, we will get it as two. Therefore, the output y one is equal to two, or y one has a crisp output equal to two. Similarly, we substitute one point five and two point five in rule two, rule three, and rule four, and we'll get it as y two is equal to point five. Y three will be equal to one point five, and Y four will be equal to six. Now that we have got all the crisp values of the outputs Y one, Y two, Y three, and Y four, and we have obtained all the corresponding values of membership, we can now apply the weighted average defalcification method to find Y star. So we have Y star, which will be equal to. W Y one into Y one plus W Y two into Y two plus W Y three into Y three plus W Y four into Y four, and this entire thing divided by W one Y one plus W Y two plus W Y three plus W Y four, and now let's substitute the values. So we have this equal to w y one, which is point three. So we have point three into two plus we have point three into point five plus point four into one point five plus point seven into six, and this entire thing divided by Point three plus point three plus point four plus point seven, and when we solve this, we will get the value of y star, which will be equal to three point 
3.264 or I'll approximately take it as 3.26. So this is our defalsified value Y star with the help of the weighted average defalsification method. So this is how you solve a simple Sugino model. Now a very important note over here is that the Sugino method is much more better than Mamdani since it avoids the time consuming methods of defalsification that are needed for the Mamdani model. In the case of Sugino method, we can directly apply the weighted average defalsification model and that is why it is much more better as compared to the Mamdani model. I hope the concepts that were taught in this lecture were clear to all of you. If anyone has any doubts, please feel free to ask in the comment section below. Either we or another viewer will surely help you out. If you found this video to be useful, please like this video and support us by subscribing to the channel. In the next lecture, we will be covering the last graphical inference technique which is the Sukumoto model. Thank you for watching properly and have a great day.